Hello and welcome to our Gold Learning viewers. I'm Fiona Lang Sharp, IBCLC Director of Communications at Gold Learning here. Well, welcome everyone. I have the pleasure of sitting down with Heather Clark today, and we've been working today already on, on a few things in the background, but I'm excited to say that we get to uh, invite her to talk a little bit about herself now. We're going to learn some things about Heather, and of course, she's going to be speaking at our upcoming Gold Midwifery Conference, which is right around the corner here, coming up, it starts on February 5th. And Heather's going to be with us live. That's right. She's going to be here live on Monday, the 12th of February. So let me start, Heather, by asking you a couple of questions here. Like I said, I want to know more about you. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us what you currently do on a day-to-day -day basis and where you are in the world. OK, well, thank you very much. It's exciting to be here. Um, Last year, I made a, a decision to make some major changes in my life, mostly based around living my joy. Um, I find that so many of us live under constant stress, and we're, you know, working a job and going, going, going on a on a treadmill, and um, not really taking time for self. And and that's something that has been very important to me: taking time for self. Um, so I moved back to the Caribbean, where I was originally born, and haven't lived in over 56 years. So as you can imagine, it was quite an adjustment. Um, but I moved back to the Caribbean, and I generally, most days, start my day maybe around 6 o'clock. I get up, um, meditate, walk across the street to the beach, and uh, do some yoga, and um, just greet the day and maybe I jump in the ocean or come back home and grab my puppies and let them go run on the beach with they love. Um, so I think paying attention to self is, is really, really important. Um, I'm fortunate that I live, I work from home. Um, I currently am a assistant professor at Frontier Nursing University. Um, and where I'm engaged in the education of uh, nurse midwifery and nurse practitioner students. It's really exciting. And I'm particularly excited because I teach a professional role course for the nurse midwifery students. And so I have an opportunity to um, really expose them to the professional role of a nurse midwife, but also inspire them with the art of midwifery and, and uh, really help them tap into what it means to be with women um, in a very present way. And when it comes to pre- and perinatal psychology, that, that really is um, is the essence of what it's about, is really connecting and being present with the women and the families and the babies that we serve. Um, I, I also have some side projects that I'm working on. I'm really committed to um, improving um, uh, general health care on the island. So I have, have developed a proposal to um, advance preventative health care here and um, anticipate um, meeting with some government officials to move that along. Um, and this is really, again, to work with people with chronic disease wherever they are, but beginning during the preconception uh, period, bringing in principles of pre- and perinatal psychology and carrying those really throughout the life cycle. So yeah, I'm pretty busy. <laughs> You certainly are, Heather. That's amazing. I am well. Kudos to you. And certainly, when you started off by saying that you've changed your life and you've put some implemented some things that uh, you know have really so you wanted to improve those things for yourself, and then you moved back to your home country. Uh, that is just incredible because that's a it's a very brave thing to do. I think today because you're dealing with a lot of different dynamics. I'm sure. So that's that's just incredible. Thank you so much for sharing that. Well, my next question uh, I have for you result, uh, revolves around your 
your focus uh, that I actually saw in your bio. And I was very curious to see this, because this is something that um, I can imagine happens, and yet I haven't heard a lot about it. But let me just tell our audience. So your focus, it says, is about um, obstetrical complications and looking at while others have a risky lifestyle and have no problem and good outcomes, for some women, they end up having these really life-threatening problems. So you've actually looked at some of these things. So perhaps you can just tell me how that came about in your life and why you started uh, studying and looking at that. Sure. Um, I've been a nurse midwife for, I think, about 38, 39 years now. I've stopped counting. And um, most of my career, I've cared for um, primarily low-income um, African-American, Latina women in densely urban and even uh, sparsely rural communities. Um, and for the most part, the women that I cared for had uh, fairly um, low-risk pregnancies with good outcomes, um, although there, was, there were a fair amount of preterm births and, um, and complications during the, uh, the pregnancy and birth. Um, but beyond that, from a population perspective, the more research I did and the more I looked at the data and some of those painful experiences that, um, that uh, I was exposed to in the practices that I worked in, uh, there were women that met that category despite the care that we gave them and we were giving them the best that prenatal care has to offer in the United States. Um, they still ended up with complications, and then we had those women that hardly came to care and, you know, smoked and um, just didn't eat well, and, and they kind of breezed through the pregnancy. So I started to look at that. I explored many um, um, alternative modalities to try to determine uh, the problem with, and it really wasn't until I began to study pre- and perinatal psychology and I understood that so many of our chronic diseases um, have their origins in, um, in pregnancy and um, even as early as conception, um, the emotional and physical state at which a couple uh, find themselves in at the moment of conception um, can really impact the initial um, um, growth and development of that egg meat in the ovum um, by, I, I mean, I like to think of it as, as you have this perfect blueprint of what this person could be, this potential being as it's conceived, and then because of environmental factors, that's epigenetics, right? Um, there is a, a slight tweak in that perfect template, and that sets off a cascade of other tweaks and, and, and other in epigenetic changes that eventually can lead to preterm birth, um, mother developing gestational diabetes, and on and on and on, and other complications. And then the more I studied, I realized that it wasn't just what happened at the moment of conception, that um, one's um, genetic and behavioral um, makeup and, and traits can be passed down as far back as perhaps four generations. And so physical and, yes, even psychological tendencies that our ancestors um, had uh, can be passed down to um, the uh, unborn. And of course, a lot of those things are reinforced. So if you think about it, the egg that made you uh, was formed when you were inside your grandmother. And your great-grandmother, um, as many mothers do, had significant influence over her daughter, your grandmother, while she was pregnant. And of course, your mother was inside your was growing as a uh, unborn inside your your grandmother, but the egg that was going to become 
you know, the beautiful being that you are, um, was inside your mother. So you have right there uh, three generations, and maybe if your great-great-grandmother was alive, um, but even if she wasn't alive, um, uh, she still had influence on your great-grandmother through the raising that she received. So we can see just from physical um, um, family history how perhaps as far back as your great-great-grandmother, so that's four generations, can impact you by the belief systems and the perceptions that your mother have that are passed down to you as early as in utero. We know from work uh, from uh, people like Bruce Lipton who has shown how our beliefs impact our uh, perceptions and the perceptions are formed very much by our environment. So when I started to, and, and this is how my brain works as a midwife, I, I have to go back to the beginning and see what, where it all started, the conception, right? So as I started to look at all of this, I saw how some women, by the time they come to pregnancy, have a, a history, um, maybe going back as far, far as four generations, where perhaps there was a sense of unworthiness, being abused, um, not feeling loved, not feeling wanted, and how that all, how all of those psychological patterns um, impact them while they're pregnant. That, uh, and then there are also a host of physical conditions, be it diabetes, high blood pressure, um, renal problems that are passed down from generations. And everybody has a different. Um, personal as well as intergenerational history and so that began to make some sense as to why some women um, end up with more complications and then there are other women who have more resilience in their life and the resilience often comes from their environment what kind of support do they have um, what kind of opportunities do they have they, they may still be just as poor but they have a family that is really, really supportive, and and they feel loved, and they feel accepted, and and on and on and on. So, um, so that's when I, I really began to look at how can we change the um, the environment that women find themselves in while they're pregnant, and of course, a lot of that um, is from stress. Um, whether it's perceived or real. And so what, what I'm really coming to is working on stress reduction, identifying past traumas and histories that you, you may not even be consciously aware of. Um, the science has taught us that unborn babies, even when their brain is not developed, and of course it's not, it's not really fully developed until they're um, way into their late 20s, um, they have what we call implicit memory. There's, there are memories that are lodged within their cellular structure, yes, even within their DNA, and those implicit memories impact our behavior, but we can't recall, oh, something happened to me when I was two, and this is why I'm doing that. We can't recall those memories, but they affect our cell function, our cellular memory. It's, it's like muscle memory, right? Um, and they are very much responsible for our um, our spontaneous, the patterns, the patterns of behavior in our life, not just physical, but also psychological. That's incredible. Yeah. That, that, that is just incredible, Heather. Thank you so much. I could, I could listen to you all day, <laughs> all day, and I really appreciate you uh, just, you know, getting into it there. And uh, I think I was a little mesmerized by all that detail there, but I know that this is a life passion for you and, and what you've worked so hard to, uh, to learn and share with others. So thank you so much for sharing that. Now, uh, just briefly, um, we just have just a minute left here, so I'm wondering if you can just, I know you've already told us a lot, and I'm, I know some of it will be in your PowerPoint, um, you know, in the presentation, but perhaps you could just tell us just briefly, what are you hoping that our audience will take away? Um, just one thing that you're hoping that they'll, they'll get out of your presentation. 
Sure. Um, I'm hoping that they really get an appreciation for babies and how incredibly intelligent they are and social and willing and able to communicate if we just get our egos out of the way and listen um, and respecting babies and teaching mothers how to listen and bond and love their babies because that's really all that babies want they want to be loved and acknowledged right from the start and if we give them that from the very beginning and all through pregnancy and birth and early childhood then we really set them off on a pattern that they build more and more resilience and they're able to mitigate any stressors that may come their way in life. Most definitely. Well, we all love babies. There's no doubt about it, Heather. And I'm certainly looking forward to having an even better understanding um, learning from you, of course. So thank you. And thank you so much for being with us here today. We certainly appreciate it. Um, so for our listening audience, again, we've been listening to Heather Clark today. She's going to be talking about pre- and perinatal psychology to improve birth outcomes. As you've heard, she has a lot to say about this. So please join us. Um, I know that you are not going to be disappointed. She's going to be with us for our live presentation Monday, the 12th of February. Go to our website, goldmidwifery.com, to check out what time it's going to be in your local area, because it will, of course, be different for everyone, as we have an international audience. And uh, our conference starts on February 5th with our opening keynote, which is open and free access, so join us for that, too. So thank you again to Heather Clark for being with us today, and thank you again to all of our delegates and listening audience. Bye-bye for now, everyone.